Hello guys. Welcome to part three of my Ram Tiger Stalingrad diorama build. In the previous video in this series, I had the Ram Tiger itself finished. I had started to build the diorama base and get a couple of rough positions for the figures. And in the previous video, I'd painted the base, put a few different shades on the groundwork, got the base coat down on everything and started to do the detail painting on the bricks and the accessories and so on. In this video I'm going to be finishing this build, completing the weathering, adding the final few accessories, painting the figures and getting everything in place. In the previous video I showed you these um, steel girders made of styrene. I decided they looked a little bit too plain and uh, pristine so I decided to hack away at them with a drill and a knife and a few other bits and pieces to try to make a few um, bullet holes and shell holes even possibly in them and so on. Uh, basically just to some, you know, some shrapnel damage and so on. You can see that quite a lot in the um, reference photos. And I think they look a lot better like this. I then went over them with a coat of green this green is from AK Real Colors and it's the Russian Soviet uh, 1930s um, green sort of standard primer color. I figured they would use that in their factories as well, so that's what I went for. I painted the areas where the girders have been damaged with a gray color to represent the steel. And followed that up with some chipping with a metallic color. That chipping was also applied to some of the accessories, such as this 3D printed jerry can. The 3D printing was really helpful for me when building this diorama, as you can see from this sheet of corrugated iron there, and this hammer and sickle, which has fallen off the factory onto the ground. And that was simply painted with a grey base coat and then sponge chipping on various shades of grey. I figure the Ram Tiger would collect quite a lot of debris in this uh, strange opening it has at the front. So I used some of the leftover bricks from the groundwork and PVA glued them into appropriate places, including on the tracks. Some of them I had to break, so I covered up the white exposed plaster by painting them later on. I've had this photo etched uh, barbed wire for a while now. It's one of those products that you buy thinking you'll need loads and loads of it, and uh, then it turns out that actually a little bit goes a long way. This would be really useful for me to uh, be snagged on the Ram Tiger as if it's pulled it off a, a barricade that it's moved through. Obviously the barbed wire is quite flat as it's on the sheet here, but to make painting easier I painted it while it was flat and then twisted it and turned it and so on later on. I still wanted to break up the groundwork colour because it was quite a, uh, quite a single colour and there were a few areas where they were a bit too, the ground was a bit too light. The problem is that the sculptor mould, even with a varnish coat on top, does absorb quite a lot of the, uh, the paint, even these oil paints. So I took some dark mud oil paint and some industrial earth oil paint and applied it quite randomly, quite thickly onto the surface. Although it looks quite stark now, as I say, it gets absorbed quite quickly into the material and the overall effect is either very subtle or even sometimes just disappears completely. The oil paints were also used to weather the accessories, so the machinery, the hammer and sickle, uh, even the walls themselves a little bit. I 
With the oil paints out, I wanted to add some streaking effects to the Ram Tiger. I did this in this fairly standard way by applying a small dot or a small streak of oil paint, then blending it in a vertical motion with a brush just lightly dipped in thinners. The effect is subtle, but you can see it here. I also took some darker oil paint and put it around some of the recesses here to emphasize that pin wash which I applied earlier. In this case, I blended it deliberately less than the streaks. And I put a few streaks onto the building walls as well to try to break up their appearance. I wanted to add some kind of uh, dirt and soil, not necessarily mud, but just something in the tracks of the Ram Tiger. To do that, I use my favorite acrylic texture paste, which is this dry ground from AK Interactive. It's an acrylic texture, so you can blend it with water. I tried to get it in the gaps between the tracks. If I got any of the raised areas, I could wipe it off with a cotton bud dampened in water. Of course, this is not the colour I'm going to use, but it does provide the texture. And when it was dry, I airbrushed it with this muddy colour mix, which is a mix of flat earth and um, buff. And it's the same colour I used initially on the groundwork on the base. So that should help to blend it in. Then I could add the Ram Tiger shell to the, uh, the chassis and I used some more of that same mud colour paint on the bottom of the, uh, the shell as a kind of general dust and dirt coat. Now to be honest, once I'd done all of that, I still wasn't really 100% happy with the terrain. And looking at it carefully and trying to have a critical eye, I realised that it was the texture of the ground that didn't really um, do for me what it should. So even though it would mean undoing a lot of the work that I'd already done, I went back to my good old favourite, the AK Dry Ground Terrain Texture, and I went over the entire road with this texture. Which of course looks quite messy, but it does have that uh, gritty appearance, which I think is quite important. And once that was done, then I went back through the entire process, airbrushing some colours on, airbrushing a few uh, variations of colours, going through the oil paints and so on. Moving on to those metal beams, I figured those girders needed a little bit more variation still, so I took a few of the shades of green that I have and did a very heavy sponge chipping effect on them. And I suppose though it's called sponge chipping, the effect was so heavy that really it's just representing um, different sort of fading and wear on the paint as much as anything else but I did like the end result. I also painted a few spots XF9, which is a sort of reddy brown rusty color. Finally, I felt like the weathering of these pillars was really enhanced by a very heavy oil paint wash. This is sepia and it's not thinned anywhere near as much as I normally would thin it for a wash and I'm applying it all over the place very liberally, not minding if it uh, pulls anywhere or anything like that. And this is to represent years of dirt and grime from the factory and of course from uh, combat. Those girders were then put into place and although they're not particularly sturdy on their own, the cross beams are super glued to them and it provides a bit of rigidity there. In several of the reference photos, we do have lots of things uh, hanging down from the ceiling, uh, cables and wires and things like that. I found this old sort of rubber tubing, which I think came from my Tamiya Flak 88 kit. I thought it'd be quite useful, especially if it was painted later. 
but of course it's very uh, lightweight and doesn't really fall where you want it to fall. However, I was lucky enough to have this really thin wire which happens to fit just inside this rubber tubing. And with the wire inside, of course, it makes it easier to uh, bend it to the right position. So these cables were super glued in place. I don't have a lot of shots of this, unfortunately, because my uh, primary lens broke at this point. I had some photo etched barbed wire hanging around for a long time. It's one of those things that you buy a little bit of and then it turns out you've got way too much. I tried to make it into a roll by wrapping it around a paint pot and leaving it overnight with uh, limited success. But that was primed, painted and added towards the front of the diorama where the ram tiger has sort of uh, gone through it and got tangled up a little bit in it. In terms of painting the figures, I am by no means the best figure painter in the world, but I am trying to get better. They were given a black base coat and then a light spray of white from above to make some highlights. To be honest, a lot of this was lost in the later coats, which were too thick. But I did try to give a light coat of XF65 Field Grey. I figured that would be the base colour for most of the uniform and then a few of my favourite Vallejo colours to add some variation, so the odd uh, pair of trousers or jacket that was a slightly different colour. This paint probably should have been thinned more to allow some of that uh, base shadow work to show through. The flesh was done with uh, AK base flesh and then highlighted with some light flesh. With hindsight probably I could have added some extra shades there. And to be honest I think the skin is the uh, weakest part of these figures. Picking out the equipment, I didn't want everyone to have a, a rainbow of uh, colours on their back but at the same time I didn't want it to be uniform either. And I was also aware that any colours I used would be toned down later with a varnish. The detail work was a bit hard to film even with a macro lens, but here you can see we've got our figure with the straps, the insignia, the buttons and the belt and so on painted. On the ammo canister that he's carrying there, some sponge chipping using a metallic colour. I had a go at making some rifle slings using some doubled over Tamiya tape and then cutting it into very thin slithers. These were painted and then attached to the figures with some super glue. To blend the figures into the terrain they were given a light coat of the same muddy colour that I used on the vehicle and they were given a dark sepia wash like those steel beams. With that done all I had to do was position the figures. I wanted them to be using the Ram Tiger as cover as they advanced. but also with a couple of figures moving through the rubble on the far side of the diorama. When I was happy with the positions, I attached them with some super glue.
And there we have it guys, there was my Ram Tiger Stalingrad diorama. I hope you had as much fun watching this video as I did building the kit. I did start building this Ram Tiger back in August 2021, so it's taken me over a year to get things finished. But I did get there in the end. I feel like I've learned quite a lot during that time, and I'm really pleased the way that things came together. I did consider using the 3D printer to create some window frames, as you can see in several reference photos, but in the end I just uh, I decided against it for this time. I think my 3D design skills need a bit of practice before I, uh, before I do that. But yes, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and the other two parts as well, they've both been very popular. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. I'm really grateful for the ongoing support that you guys provide. It makes a massive difference to the channel and I really appreciate it, so thank you very much guys. And of course, if you would like to join Patreon, there's a link on the screen at the moment and in the description below. You can also find photos of my work on Instagram. And of course, I'll have some more videos coming soon. So if you don't want to miss those, then remember to hit the subscribe button. And until the next video, have fun modelling.